Strawberries and Cream by Yu Mei Once upon a time in the cozy floral forest village, there lived a delightful little girl named Cream the Rabbit. She had the most adorable floppy ears that granted her the power of flight. She had a fluffy white tail, a heart of gold, and wore an orange sundress. Cream lived in a cozy burrow with her mother Vanilla, and her best friend, Cheese the Jow. Cheese was a small, sky-blue creature with a teardrop-shaped head and a tiny pair of wings, who was fond of wearing red bow ties. Like all Jow, he had a floating ball above his head, rather like a halo, that could form shapes and express his emotions. They were inseparable friends, always playing and exploring the beautiful world around them. One sunny afternoon, Cream and Cheese were frolicking in a meadow, chasing butterflies and picking flowers. As they played, they heard a loud commotion in the distance. Curious, they approached the source of the noise and found two cloaked figures being attacked by one of Dr. Eggman's robot minions. Oh dear, this is not good, said Cream, her voice filled with concern. Chow! Cheese exclaimed, as an exclamation mark appeared over his head. Cream hesitated. But mother always told me not to talk to strangers. Chow! 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 Cheese suggested, a question mark appearing over his head. You're right, Cheese. We need to go home at once to tell an adult to phone 911. That's what mom would want me to do in an emergency. But just as Cream turned towards home, she heard the two strangers moaning piteously. Oh! Won't someone come to rescue us from this vile robot created by Dr. Robotnik? Specifically some like Sonic a Hedgehog! wailed a high-pitched voice, before squawking with fright like a chicken. A dopey, lower-pitched voice chimed in, as though reading words from a script in a stiff monotone. Yeah, we're innocent, unarmed civilians, in desperate need of help. If only, ah... Uh... Sonic the Hedgehog, you hit! Oh uh, yeah, if only Sonic the Hedgehog would help us, right now, please. Cream held her hands to her mouth and looked to cheese. The poor strangers were so frightened, they could barely speak. With a determined nod to one another, Cream and Cheese decided to disobey her mother's instructions and help the poor strangers. She flew towards the commotion, her ears flapping in the wind. As she approached the scene, she could see the two cloaked figures cowering before a menacing robot composed of boxy shapes and holding what looked like a giant laser gun. Diving between the robot and its two victims, Cream swung her powerful ears like a sling to knock the robot off balance. To her surprise, the robot immediately crashed to the ground and fell apart like wet cardboard, revealing a skeleton of cheap mops and brooms held together by duct tape. Upon closer inspection, Cream recognized the head as an ancient boombox, probably from the remote 1990s, with a crudely painted face, and the giant laser gun was a plastic toy loaded only with orange-tipped foam bullets. Huh? This isn't a dangerous robot at all. But why were you two so afraid of? Cream squeaked with surprise as she felt her arms grab from behind and twisted behind her back on each side. Chow! Chow! Translation, look out, Cream, squealed Cheese in warning, but alas too late. The two cloaked figures pulled back their hoods, revealing themselves to be none other than Scratch and Grounder, two of Dr. Eggman's most elite and dimwitted minions. Well, well, well! Said Scratch, snatching Cheese by the yellow ball that floated above his head. Looks like we caught ourselves a little rap! Translation, you fiends, Cheese protested, but the two minions ignored him. Now, let's take them to the boss, said Grounder, transforming his free hand into a pair of shackles. Cream's ears stood on end as she saw Grounder prepare to handcuff her. Wait, I can take you to Sonic if you let me go. Grounder beamed with delight, and immediately released his grip on Cream. Really, you do that? Whoa, you hear that, Scratch? She's gonna take us to Sonic! The boss will be so proud of us. Cream immediately made a dash to the air, only to feel something grasp roughly at her ears, trying to pull her back down to earth. Now I'm Buckethead! We need her hostage to catch Sonic! Wailed Scratch, scrambling over Grounder to snatch Cream by the ear. <coughs> Translation, run, Cream, Cheese cried. Unable to break free, Cheese bit Scratch's hand with all his might, distracting the robotic chicken just enough to loosen his grip on Cream. Tears sprang to Cream's eyes, and pulling with all her might, she broke free from Scratch's grip and flew to the trees. Now oh, look what you did! Browner! Who let her get away? I'm telling on you to Dr. Robotnik! No, 
You let her get away! Hi, Mom! Double telling on you to Dr. Robotic! Now sobbing, Cream cried out from the safety of the trees. Cheese? Chow chow! Answered Cheese urgently. What? Save myself and run to get help? But, I can't leave you Cheese. Scratch smiled wickedly as he listened to this heartwarming display of self-sacrificial love. Well, you better come back with us, or else we'll have to change your friend's name to Grilled Cheese! Said Scratch, dangling Cheese before Cream like a toy. What's wrong with that? Grounder asked, genuinely confused. I'm threatening to literally kill her pet, you do it! Said Scratch, rolling his eyes. That's stupid. Changing his name won't kill him. I don't think you know what the word literally means. That too! Do not. Cream's heart sank as she realized the danger she and Cheese were in. She thought about how she should have listened to her mother and called 911 instead of talking to strangers. Please don't hurt Cheese. She pleaded, tears streaming down her face. Chow chow! Said Cheese, reassuring her that he would be okay and urging her to find help. Just as Cream turned to flee, she saw a blue streak racing towards them like a lightning bolt. It was none other than Sonic the Hedgehog, coming to the rescue. Seeing that they still had Cheese as a hostage, Sonic slammed on the brakes, hoping to find a way to trick them into releasing the Jow before attacking. At the mere sight of the hero, the two bumbling robots stumbled over each other in fright, their circuits sparking with confusion. Oh, something! Sonic's literally going to turn us inside out! Scratch barked at Grounder as he cowered behind him. I'm trying, I'm trying! Grounder retorted, his hands turning into a pair of oversized boxing gloves. Sonic grinned, his eyes sparkling with mischief. Oh, you want to box? Eh, hold on, Grounder. It's not fair if I have to box you both at once. Let Scratch wait on the sidelines and block finish with you, then I'll box him next. Fair and square, what do you say? Grounder slammed his boxing gloves together. Oh! Well, that's mighty sporting of you, Sonic. Yo! Scratch seized Grounder by the antenna and whispered into his receiver. That gives me an idea! He'll leave me a pair of boxing gloves! We don't fight Sonic! I'll jump in him! We'll gang up on him! The two laughed maniacally at their evil plan as Sonic tapped his foot, whistling and pretending he couldn't overhear their every word. What's the hold up, fellas? I'm waiting! Oh! Coming, Sonic! How about Queen's Three Rules? Trying to be sneaky, Grounder opened a hatch on his caboose that revealed a hidden compartment. Scratch released his grip on Cheese and snatched at the boxing gloves in delight. Taking the chance at escape, Cheese flew towards Cream. Oh, wait a little! Scratch lunged forward to recapture the jowl, but Grounder's boxing glove hands accidentally knocked him off balance. The two robots tumbled to the ground in a heap of metal and confusion. Stay back, Cream! Sonic called out. I've got this under control. Cream nodded, her eyes wide with awe as she clutched Cheese tightly. Sonic sipped between Scratch and Grounder, and pretended to notice the second pair of boxing gloves for the first time. Oh, are these mine? How thoughtful of you. Okay, Queen Bree rules it is. Grounder stiffened in shock and swung behind him, trying to land a cheap shot on Sonic. Instead, Sonic ducked to pick up the boxing gloves, and Grounder's fist flew over him and into Scratch's leg. The chicken wailed and hopped on one foot. Baka! Grounder! Bust my drumstick! Sonic pointed at Grounder accusingly. Hey, that was a cheap shot. Are you gonna stand for that, Scratch? I certainly am not! Grounder! I literally got him off the floor of you! Give me those! Scratch snatched the boxing gloves and put them on. Sonic stroked his chin. Oh, Grounder, do you think Scratch can literally mop the floor with you? Grounder ignored Sonic to fix Scratch with a menacing glare. No, he can't. He can only figuratively mop the floor with me. As the argument escalated, neither of the robots noticed Sonic had quickly donned a boxing referee costume. As the boxing match between Scratch and Grounder began, Sonic fixed Cream with a stern look over his shoulder, silently craning his neck to order her to head home. Cream obeyed carrying Cheese, who covered his ears to drown out the sounds of the robots pummeling each other, before returning to their respective corners where Sonic zipped back and forth acting as each combatant's coach. After three rounds of splendid boxing, both robots were reduced to pieces. Cream flew home alone for a few minutes, sadly wondering if Mr. Sonic was okay, only for him to catch up with her, grinning. Well, that was fun! Cream giggled, her cheeks flushed with excitement. That was amazing! Mr. Sonic. Don't mention it, kid. 
Sonic winked, then his expression grew serious. Now we should probably get you home before your mom starts to worry. Cream's smile faltered, and she looked down at her feet. Do you think she'll be mad at me for disobeying her and talking to strangers? What if she gives me a spanking? Sonic placed a gentle hand on her shoulder. I'm sure she'll be a little upset, but she'll be so happy to see you safe and sound. And you know what? Even if you do get in trouble, your mom still loves you more than anything in the world. Really? Absolutely. With that, Sonic took Cream's hand and led her and Cheese back to Floral Forest Village. The noon sun peeked out from behind the clouds, casting a warm glow over the village. Cream noticed several flying police cars and fire trucks patrolling the streets, and overheard adults discussing the sightings of Eggman's robots near town. At the sight of her and Sonic, a female police officer approached and Sonic recounted the whole story. Cream stiffened as the officer directed her attention to her and Cheese. Your mother's been missing you both, young lady. Fortunately, after Sonic warned us about Dr. Eggman's robots prowling nearby, he volunteered to help us scour the woods. Are you hurt? No ma'am, answered Cream shyly. Of course, in a sleepy villa like Floral Forest Village, the news of dangerous robots nearby and of a missing girl would travel like wildfire. As they approached Vanilla's cottage, they could see Vanilla the rabbit standing at the entrance holding a phone, her jow companion Chocola sitting on her shoulder. At the sight of Cream, Vanilla hopped into the air waving and spoke into the receiver. Yes, officer. Sonic is bringing her home now. I'm going to check on her. Of course. Thank you for all your help. Cream gulped. Mom already knew? Oh, Cream. She cried, rushing forward to hug her daughter tightly. I was so worried. I'm sorry, Mom. Cream said, her voice muffled against her mother's fur. I just wanted to help those two strangers, and then I got into trouble. Vanilla smiled, her eyes filled with love and relief, as she embraced them both. Well, I'm just glad you're safe. Then Vanilla pulled back from the embrace, placing a hand on either of Cream's shoulders. But we need to have a serious talk about what happened today. Cream and Cheese glanced at each other, wondering just what a serious talk could mean. Cream and Cheese sipped nervously at their chamomile tea, wondering if Vanilla was angry with them as she took their dishes to the sink. Vanilla washed the dishes to try and calm her nerves. Finally she wiped away a tear and took a deep breath, before putting on a calm face. As she turned to face Cream and Cheese, she saw they were guilty-faced. Vanilla knew it was important to remain in control for both their sakes. Patting them both on the head, Vanilla sat down with them and began. Cream, I know you thought you were doing the right thing by helping those strangers, but why did you disobey me and talk to them in the first place? Mom, I'm sorry. Cream replied, her voice soft and remorseful. I just wanted to help them, and I thought it would be okay. I didn't mean to make you worry. I know, dear. Vanilla said, her voice full of understanding. But you must understand that it's not safe for you and Cheese to talk to strangers without an adult present. You could have been in real danger. I understand now, Mom. Cream said, her ears drooping. Chow chow. Hoo hoo. Inquired Cheese, his ball transforming to a question mark. Cream's eyes widened at Cheese's words, then she nodded. You're right, Cheese. We both should have known better. Mom? Do you think I deserve a spanking for what I did? Vanilla looked at her daughter, a mixture of love and concern in her eyes. Do you think you need a spanking to remind you to never talk to strangers again? Cream gripped the sides of her chair, hanging her head. Yes, I do. Cream said, her voice barely above a whisper. And what about you, Cheese? Vanilla asked, turning to the little chow. Do you think you deserve a spanking too? Chow! Cheese nodded, his little ball bobbing up and down. Vanilla stood up from the table. All right then. Come with me. Vanilla took a wooden spoon from the kitchen counter and led Cream and Cheese to the living room, where she sat down on a wooden chair. Come here, both of you. She said, patting her lap. With heavy hearts, Cream and Cheese climbed onto Vanilla's lap, and she gently positioned them so that their quivering bottoms were facing upwards. Then, Vanilla turned her attention to Cream, flipping her orange skirt up and over her back to reveal white cotton panties below her trembling white rabbit tail. Taking a deep breath, Vanilla began to spank them with her open hand, her hand coming down firmly first across Cream's right cheek, then across Cheese's round blue behind. Cream winced at the sting. Tears welled up in her eyes as she thought about what she had done, 
and how she had put not only herself but also Cheese in danger. She could hear Cheese's little squeaks of discomfort each time Vanilla's palm impacted with a sharp pop. Both Cream and Cheese trembled a bit when Vanilla paused the spanking to retrieve the wooden spoon from her apron pocket and began again. Each flinched in turn as they felt the first stinging slap from the sinister spoon. The spanking was not overly harsh, but Vanilla was determined to be firm enough to make an impression, and they, in turn, were determined to lay obediently and accept their spankings. Finally, Vanilla paused the spanking, listening to both sniffle slightly. Cream, I want you to think about something. Do you know how I asked you to take care of Cheese? Cream nodded, tears welling up in her eyes, not from the spanking, but at the sight of Cheese quivering next to her. Yes, ma'am. I remember. Do you see how by disobeying, you not only put yourself in danger, but also Cheese? Cream buried her face in Vanilla's lap, remembering how Cheese had urged her to go and leave him behind. Cream's tears became racking sobs. I, I'm sorry. I was a bad friend. She flinched as she felt a soft pat on her back, her body reacting as if it were another spank. Instead, she looked up to see Cheese smiling at her and felt Vanilla stroking her back. Now now, Cream, you're not a bad friend. But you were irresponsible. Because you're older than Cheese, I think you deserve a second spanking. You may get off my lap, Cheese. You can wait for Cream to join you in timeout. Cheese turned his head to glare at Vanilla defiantly. Help, help! Sniffling, Cream held Cheese's hand in her own. No, Cheese. Mom's right. You don't need another spanking, but I do. Now, go to timeout, mister. Cheese hesitated, then obeyed, fluttering his wings to lift himself off Vanilla's lap. As Cheese settled onto the wooden stool in the corner, his brother Chocola the Jow gave him a pat on the back with an encouraging Chow Chow, as if to say good job. Vanilla sighed with relief happy that Cheese had obeyed rather than insist on a second spanking. She hated spanking Cream and Cheese, and knew that seeing her friends suffer would only break Cream's heart. Cream, are you ready? Cream shook her head, trembling. Not yet, Mommy. I think. I deserve a SB spanking on my be bear boo-boo bottom. Oh, do you, now? Vanilla patted Cream's panty clad behind, firmly enough to ruffle the fabric. In the past, she had told Cream that a bare bottom spanking was reserved only for very bad behavior. Considering how compliant Cream had been, Vanilla had not originally planned to bear Cream's bottom, though disobeying the rule to talk to strangers would certainly merit it. Vanilla had already forgiven Cream, but if Cream was asking for this of her own free will, Vanilla knew that Cream must still be feeling terribly guilty. So, Vanilla decided, then and there, to make this spanking a memorable one indeed. That's very brave, Cream. In that case, stand up and drop your britches. Then climb back across my lap. Yes, ma'am. Hopping lightly up and off Vanilla's lap, Cream dropped her panties just below her bottom, which was only slightly pink from her first spanking, then skipped back up into position, lifting her own skirt up over her back as she lay down. Cream could see a few tear stains on the carpet below her, and could see her own dangling feet through the legs of the chair. Vanilla retrieved the trusty wooden spoon from her apron pocket, and tapped the rounded end of the spoon against Cream's bare behind. Cream's eyes went wide, recognizing the texture of the wooden surface against her furry fanny from previous experience. She looked back at her mother, trembling. Cream, I'm going to give you twenty spanks with the spoon. Then, your spanking will be over. Do you think that is a fair punishment? Cream answered in her habitually polite manner. Yes, ma'am. Do you think twenty wax is enough? I don't want you to go on feeling guilty forever. Once your spanking is over, you are forgiven. Do you think you'll be able to forgive yourself, too? As she considered the question, Cream suddenly felt her tension melt. Right now, it really did sound like a fair punishment. And once it was over, she knew she would be very sorry indeed. But anything would be better than the terrible burden of guilt she felt. Yes, ma'am. Very good, dear. Then let's begin. Cream blew her nose delicately on a hanky tucked it back into her front pocket, and settled back onto Mom's lap, gripping the legs of the chair to steady herself as she felt the warning tap, tap, tap of the spoon. Knowing that the time for lecturing had passed, Vanilla slowly delivered the first ten swats with the back of the wooden spoon, giving Cream time to feel each one leave a red oval mark across her lower cheeks. Cream yelped and howled at the sound of each smack. 
She held her hands and legs in place as resolutely as she could, but she saw her own feet kick up a little reflexively. As she saw her panties slowly succumb to gravity and catch around her knees, Cream's eyes grew watery and she shut her eyes tight. Impressed by Cream's resolve, Vanilla lightly twirled the wooden spoon in her hand, then tapped Cream's bottom lightly three times with a concave surface. In order for the lesson to be most effective, Vanilla knew it was important to give Cream time to reflect on what was coming to her. Cream's eyes fluttered open as she felt the hollow side of the spoon. A tiny voice at the back of her mind said, Uh-oh. Before the spoon landed and the world turned black yet again. The inner side of the spoon hurt just as much as the outer side, but left red marks like rings, and produced a sharper popping sound with each impact. It had just the effect Vanilla hoped for. Thrown for a loop by the change of events, Cream's resolve crumbled and she stopped trying to hold back her tears. After the second smack, Cream let out a high-pitched yelp, and at the third, her cry became a long, shuddering wail of despair. Vanilla landed the next three smacks in quick succession, and Cream arched her back and kicked her legs, now crying freely. As Cream's head drooped back down, her panties also dropped weakly down to her ankles. Gravity had won against her resolve. As the last four spanks landed slowly, Cream's feet squirmed uselessly one final time, stretching the elastic band of the undergarments, before Cream lay exhausted across her mother's knee, every muscle in her body relaxed. Cream felt her tears damping her cheeks and her ears flopping to the carpeted floor. She had lost count long ago, and lay waiting for the next spank, her only remaining thought one of acceptance. Instead, Vanilla set aside the spoon and patted Cream's red bottom reassuringly with her hand. That's twenty. Good job, Cream. I'm so proud of you. Cheese? Come out of time out. I want to give you both a hug. Finally, the spanking was over, and Vanilla pulled them both into her arms, hugging them tightly. I forgive you both, she said, her voice filled with love. But let that be a reminder to you. Never to talk to strangers without an adult present. It's for your own safety. We understand, Mom. Cream said, sniffling as she wiped away her tears. To her embarrassment, she realized that her nose had been running. Vanilla then led Cream and Cheese to time out, setting Cheese back on his little stool as Cream stood. Now, think about what you did wrong and how you can avoid making the same mistake in the future, she said, her voice stern again. Feeling her panties tug at her feet, Cream bent down to retrieve them. Cream's tail stood on end as Vanilla planted a light love tap of warning across the still bare butted bunny's buns. No, Cream. You know the rule. Keep those right where I left them. Cream's hands flew into position behind her head, her fingers interlaced, and her nose pressed lightly against the wall. I'm sorry, Mom. I forgot. Vanilla smiled as she removed a hairpin from behind her ear and neatly pinned Cream's skirt up above her tail. In the past, she had needed to give Cream additional spankings for disobeying and leaving time out, but Vanilla knew to be patient with Cream's innocent mistakes. That's okay, dear. Now stand in the corner until I come and release you. And no rubbing. Yes, ma'am. As Cream and Cheese stood in the corner, they could feel the warmth of the sun on their already warm backsides and the gentle breeze from the open window. Chow chow. Cheese said softly, his voice filled with remorse. I know. Cheese. Cream replied, her voice trembling, but this time with relief. It really hurt, but I'm glad Mom spanked us. It's important to learn our lesson, right? Chow. Chow chow chow. Cheese agreed, bobbing his little head. And I'm so grateful for you, Cheese. Cream continued, her eyes shining. You're always there for me, even when we get into trouble. We have to be more careful in the future, okay? Chow. She said sympathetically, glancing at Cream's bottom. Cream twisted her head ever so slightly out of position to peek at the damage to her backside. Sure enough, she could make out the bright red marks left by the spoon, a neat collection of ten little polka dots and ten large rings. Yes, cheese, I'm glad it's over, but I sure deserved it. Phew. Chow chow co co chow! You're right, cheese. I do feel much better now. You've forgiven me. Mom's forgiven me. I think I'm ready to forgive myself. Unbeknownst to them, Vanilla listened in on their conversation as she prepared a tray of milk and cookies, her heart swelling with pride, and relieved to hear that Cream wasn't being too hard on herself. Cream, cheese. You may come out of time out now. 
The duo turned around, their faces lighting up with relief and gratitude. They rushed into Vanilla's arms, hugging her tightly. Cream was so excited, she actually forgot to pull up her panties and fix her dress. Thank you mom, Cream whispered. We've learned our lesson, and we promise to be more careful in the future. Cool, cool. Cheese agreed. That's all I can ask for, my sweet Cream. Vanilla replied, her voice filled with love. Now, let's all have some cookies and milk to cheer ourselves up, shall we? Vanilla's chocolate chip cookies were legendary. Forgetting everything else, Cream spun a pirouette as the warm aroma of the cookies called her name, but then something almost tripped her. Vanilla snickered as she caught her daughter and removed the hairpin holding her skirt up at the back. Cream, dear? You forgot to cover your tail, silly. Blushing madly, Cream covered her bottom with one hand as she retrieved her panties with the other. The cookies were so warm and wonderful, Cream thought that even the warmth of her bottom seemed to lose its sting. That night, Cream kicked her feet playfully behind her as she lay on her tummy in her pajamas, writing in her diary before bed. Still a little sore and smarting, she had unbuttoned the drop seat of her jammies to let the cool air soothe her well spanked tail. Dear Diary Today was quite an adventure. I woke up early and had breakfast with my mom, Vanilla, and my best friend, Cheese. After breakfast, I wanted to help some strangers who seemed to be in trouble, but it turned out to be a trap set by Scratch and Grounder. I was so scared, but then my hero, Mr. Sonic, came to the rescue. He saved me and Cheese and brought us back home to my mom. When we got back, I knew I was in trouble. I had to tell mom I disobeyed her rule to never talk to strangers. I felt so guilty. My mom was disappointed, but she was also relieved that we were safe. She decided that Cheese and I needed a spanking to teach us a lesson, and she was right. I only cried a little during the first spanking. Cheese was crying too, and I felt so bad for getting us both into trouble. But we both knew that we deserved it for disobeying and putting ourselves in danger. I'm glad that mom gave me a second spanking and not Cheese. It was bad enough I got him into trouble in the first place. The wooden spoon was really painful, and I cried a lot. My bottom felt like it was on fire, and it was hard not to squirm and try to avoid the spanks. After the spanking, my mom hugged me and told me that she loved me and that she wants me to be safe. I promised her that I would never disobey her again and that I would always be more careful in the future. My bottom is still a little sore, but I know that it's a reminder of the lesson I learned today. I'm so thankful to my mom for loving me enough to discipline me, and to Mr. Sonic for always being there to save the day. I'm going to do better, and I'll never forget the importance of listening to my mom. Good night, diary. Love? Cream. Putting away her diary and clicking off the light, Cream blew a kiss to Cheese in the crib next to her bed, and tucked herself under her blankets, laying on her side as she drifted off to sleep. The End Spanks for listening. If you enjoy my spanking stories, you can follow me on DeviantArt and Patreon. You may spank it once.